Oh yeah, air conditioner on a hot day. It's also a rainy day, so I've been saving this for just such an occasion. This may be the most important video I've ever made, because it may very well help you with your setup if you've been accumulating a bunch of game systems over many years like I have. So, as you can tell, I've got a whole bunch of stuff just like strewn out and pulled out, namely the cables and stuff like that. And I thought, well... As long as I am, you know, revamping this, I should show you guys how I revamp this stuff. Because, yeah, I got, like, the Switch over there. Um, oh, wait, that, yeah, the SNES Classic I plopped down there. And then there's also the PS2 now. And, yeah, it's just it's just generally been a while since I've redone this. And i got to shine a flashlight in here. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that I can do better than this. But... <laughs> And especially better than this. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's definitely worthy of a slight redoing. And when you have a bunch of game systems like that, you probably accumulate these garbage things known as power bricks. Or as they've been dubbed power bricks. They're so, so heavy and so bulky, but they tend to block your surge protectors, you know, like this, because you put you put it in one of these, and then the, the sucker blocks two other ones, and then you end up having to, like, put it on the end of the surge protector, then you can just barely, maybe, get something in over there if it doesn't have a ground. <laughs> so, yeah, um, so in, in the case of that, I recommend a surge protector like this, where it's got, yeah, the plugs all separated like that. There's a whole bunch of designs. This one I got, it was like for a Christmas thing. That's why it's in the green color. So I, I figure that would be pretty dang handy to get for this monstrosity of a setup. <laughs> and I've also got some tools over here because I got a wet, partially wet, partially dry towel over here, you know, for the inevitable dusting. Uh, tape of two different kinds. I'm not sure which ones I'm actually gonna need. Some of these cable clamp type thingy here. Yeah, they go like that. And then you flick. Oh, this is difficult to do with one hand. And then you you flick this thing back on the top here, and yeah, it opens up. Same with all the other ones. Got some little nipper type pliers there for any sort of uh, cable ties that I used to use in case I want to get rid of them. Because the, the cable ties I used were zip ties, which are like permanent ties, which I probably shouldn't have done, so I might just clip it off like that. And I've also got uh, these sorts of ties where um, you have one end that sticks into the other end and it just zips right through with the little zigzaggy things. So yeah, I've got a plan and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Well, at least for the most part. I'm probably going to have to improvise some of this because, you know, I've got to figure out ways how to tuck the cables behind, you know, this whole place here. But at the same time, make it so that it's actually accessible. Like when I go around this side, you can see there's plenty of room back there, although kind of dusty. But <laughs> this is this is behind the TV stand. And yeah, that's another one of the surge protectors. I've currently got two there. But uh, obviously I'm going to need another one for... The total number of systems and monitors, TVs, etc., etc. Oh, and also, when you plug something in to a surge protector, make sure that you're not overloading its voltage slash amps on here. Like this one here uh, says 125 volts or 15 amps maximum on here. So anything that uses a lot of uh, volts amperages you pretty much don't want to plug into here if you're planning on get, you know like connecting a whole bunch of stuff to it as well because if it goes over that you know you can start a fire and stuff like that and that's not all that safe so stuff like our CRT TV here is a uh, you know that would be like a high voltage sort of dealio to keep in its own thing same with something like an air conditioner but, <laughs> but that's uh different sort of setup than you know just the gaming setup but yeah so all right i am going to i suppose do like a fast forwarded compilation of sorts as i'm getting this stuff all together then
Oh, and yes, a vacuum is in the equation. Well, not quite all together at first, because you see, there's so much of a tangle back there from all the shifting of stuff through the years, and, well, well, I basically had to disconnect everything from everything else, including the backs of the systems, because when you have a large system attached to a cable, it's difficult to unweave that cable from its knotted glory because you you can't like push the system through the holes, be, through the knots like backwards. So it's easier to do it with just the smaller ends of the cables out. But then as I disconnected each of them, I had to make sure that I did each of them individually so I didn't like misplace a cord with some other system or whatnot. Although some of them use the same connections and whatnot. It's just a thing of I like them all with the same name that they came with for the sake of labeling and whatnot. So, yeah, I just kept on this until it became easier and easier because, yeah, there's less and less cord knottages as I went, so it went faster and faster as I went. Also, you'll see me juggling that cloth, the wet and dry cloth there. I'm basically dusting the systems, of course, and pulling the cable through my hand that is holding the cloth, like on, on all 360 around the cord like that, to dust all sides of the cord at once. That's the fastest way that I found to be able to dust the cables. Alright, according to the camera, it took me about 22 minutes to get this far. Everything's dusted, and everything is, is in its own piles. It's just a matter of getting them all wrapped up and whatnot to something more manageable. Of course, I still left, like, the majority of the stuff that's up here, because there really isn't... Oh, God. Because there really isn't any real reason for me to move that, considering that, you know, I, I already, uh... I mean, this is all, like, really open, and I just have to bring connections up to the top and whatnot. So, yeah, so far, so good. And down here... Oh, man, this is what it looks like when it's empty. <laughs> That's just the cable cord, you know, for, like, cable TV, but we... I mean, I haven't really had a cable up here for ages, as I would need a box to convert it to the CRT TV or whatnot or whatever, and I... Yeah, I really don't watch TV enough to even warrant that, so... <laughs> Only thing left is I didn't really dust back here all that much. Uh, that's, what I'm gonna, that's what I'm gonna take the vacuum to. Besides just vacuuming the floor and whatnot. But yeah, other than that, I, I kept it pretty clean for the most part. It's just, you know, it's difficult to maintain with all those wires and stuff like that. Um, but how I'm gonna do this, though, is I'm gonna do one system at a time and tie up the cords as I go for like maximum efficiency of the cords I guess you could say uh, oh yeah that that's a speaker cord for the monitor up there so I definitely gotta wrap that up too but you know that's when I get up to the top stuff which is all the HD gaming dealio type portion of it updates I decided to move the speaker stuff out of there like what I just said because it was kinda really getting in the way oh and I also have this little speaker extender cord thingy because it's kinda difficult to reach up and under here to, to pull it out or push it in whenever I wanna do something there and yeah so I just popped that in there to give myself a little extra hand I'm I mean it, it looks kinda messy though so I, I'm not sure if I'll keep it that way but yeah, now now this is all not hanging there, and now I can start flip-flopping stuff around from all over here. So yeah, as I said, all this stuff is all piled up uh, with you know the cables on top to on top of or next to said systems or whatnot. So it's it looks kind of kind of bad now, but oh oh, we'll get there. <laughs> Despite the. Uh, TV being a pretty important thing, it's gonna be like the last thing that I put in because it's it's really only got that power cord to connect, and that's you know the very very last of the last of anything to worry about. So if I if I plugged it in up there to that outlet, it would be in my way the whole time. So because it's so bulky, so yeah. And since it has the connection this here, I know how to tether all the game systems to um, that. This, this box thingy here, yeah, it's a little switcher thing. It's got a whole, whole bunch of stuff on the back there to switch between, so... Yeah, that basically is all going to be connected to the TV just with one 
single cable rather than all those cables just like hanging out out in the open and stuff like that so then I can just switch between them with the box oh yeah and the Wii over here and the Wii U both have power bricks on the cords themselves so they actually end um, in just like a regular plug like that uh, so they they actually won't cause that much issue other than them just being ridiculously heavy <laughs> so I've got to figure out some way to like brace them so that they aren't tugging on the cords 24 7 or whatnot anyway what I'm doing now is just putting a pile I should say moving the HD connection systems over to the side and I'll work on the SD stuff first because all the HD stuff goes above for the top monitor so yeah I figured start from the ground up <laughs> All right, now for the surge protectors here. You know how they work. They're just, you know, you plug one into the wall and then the other ones all tether to that. And then you can tether that to another surge protector and etc. Just as long as you don't overload the amperage slash voltage and, you know, start a fire and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do here is sort of figure out this first, like how I want to fit it back there. Because, you know, I've got to sort of kind of figure out how to stuff this, you know, everything all together back there somehow. And there, as I said there before, there's plenty of room back here. I don't know if you can even, well, it's kind of too dark, but yeah, I don't, <laughs> but yeah. So also another thing that I have to think about is that when you plug one surge protector into the other is that you end up blocking uh, a potential power brick spot like if you uh, put it at the end or something like that thoughtlessly to kind of tether them end to end like that then you lock out a spot where a power brick can go and then you yeah and then you have to unplug it replug it and let's just try and get rid of that whole notion to begin with here and just keep it as easy as possible for said power bricks so obviously I'm gonna keep this one primarily for the power bricks but if I need extra ones I'll make sure to keep the end ones open for said power bricks oh and yes the reason why I unplugged everything from here rather than just leave it in there and dust it was because they too were very very tangled and quite in the way so I thought eh let's just take everything out oh and I've also still got a vacuum so give me a minute here I'm just blindly feeling with the vacuum hose to try and get all the dust that I can get out of the back area That's it. Okay, so now for the surge protectors. <laughs> First, I'm gonna move, because I still haven't moved that either, the actual monitor on top out of there, just so I don't confuse any plugs or anything like that. And now we're gonna start with, I think the big fat one here, like the extra fat one compared to the other ones, just because it'll probably be the hardest to fit at the end. So I'm gonna go in the bottom outlet, and I'm going to do some shimmy shamming here with the, the cables, like wrap them all up next to it and then stuff them underneath there. Because I, I don't think it's really necessary to zip tie or, you know, like sort of tie these up in general just because they're so short. Plus, if I need to pull them out and they're tied up, that would really suck. So <laughs> let's just kind of avoid that if at all possible. Okay, so that looks like it's pretty nice and free. And cable cord I really don't need is in the way, but I don't want to disconnect it either because it's hard to get into where it's connected to in case I do want to put cable back on in here. So I'm just going to leave it kind of wrapped around in that corner there. Uh, so I'm thinking this one next. And it's going to go by where that cable cord is. The same uh, wraparound dealio thing here. I'm going to go do something like that and plug it in the far right one here, but not, not the one that's on the, the very end where I can put a power brick, but instead the one that's closest to where the uh, reset switch is. That way I won't have any sort of um, issue with power bricks and it's, it's like a singular uh, cable type thing. Oh 
Oh, actually, I just realized I was really terribly, terribly descriptive. I mean, indescriptive. Because it's like, um, when I can put it all, like, end to end, then I can sort of treat them as if they're one cable and then stuff any extras underneath there, if at all possible. Because then they're all in, all in a line to make it as easy as possible, if possible. <laughs> and then, of course, big green here is going to be the last, uh, not at the very end, in case of power bricks. So it's going to be one from the end, put it in there. And I'm just gonna just gonna leave it hanging out here, and then after I'm done with all the power bricks, I'll stuff it back in there. But yeah, okay. So let's give you an example of what I am planning to do here. So let's just say we grab the NES here, and I should probably get rid of the controller cord here. That the controllers don't really have to be connected with the rest of it, you know, just with the setup and whatnot. It'll just end up getting in the way as it just flops all over the place. So this is the sort of thing that I've got here, is that I've got these tied up with rubber bands and tape and all sorts of stuff here. But with this new setup that I was thinking of, oh man, this rubber band is so old it just broke. <laughs> with, this, with this new setup that I was thinking of, I'm going to have them tethered to that eight box somewhere down in here so that there's as little extra box as possible so I mean a little as little extra cable as possible so what I'm gonna do here is get them all zigzagged right behind the system like as tight as possible and then these are gonna go in the box so I'm gonna leave them free it's gonna be it's gonna be relatively close to the box so that should be okay like that, I think. Uh, but that's also the advantage of using these uh, little zips or these sorts of zips because you can, you know, you can adjust them however you please in the future if things don't go the way that you plan because it's kind of hard to measure out everything in such like a 3D space like this because, well, just just try and figure out how to put the systems in their most efficient way and yeah <laughs> and wow this is actually giving me ire to even snap on the first one there we go okay so NES now we also look at what kind of what kind of power source it has it's got a brick of course it's got a brick and uh, thus since I'm gonna put the NES about here I'll put the brick on the end of that surge protector but there's also the issue of, remember I said that I might need to get rid of these sorts of zip tie type things? That's where these little clippers come into play because I can't like make them wider if I want to get more cord out of, uh, out of these zips. So yeah, I'm just going to kind of clip them off and then do it with the yellow zips. Besides, I, I didn't really cut these all that well, and every time I handle them, I get scratched on the little sharp plastic edge. So, <laughs> mind you, I could just, you know, cut them shorter, but it's... I didn't really set them up to be for this setup to begin with. I had a whole other TV setup um, that I had them extended to this point with, but now that I'm, I'm thinking of something more efficient and different than before I, I kind of have to snip them off anyway well at least some of them so yeah uh, I think I could actually get away with two more wrappings there and then we are going to put on another one of these golden beauties here actually really old <laughs> not as old as that rubber band I think but Still pretty old. They did was just lying around that I've had for a while, and zip it. Up. And I just broke it, kind of. <laughs> well, it doesn't really much matter though. It just yeah. As long as it's holding like that, it's okay. So this one, as I said, it's the power brick, so it's gonna go all the way at the end. But it's also got to connect to the back of the system, and of course the AV cables also have to connect to the side of the system and that's why I'm starting with the NES first 
because the NES is an oddball in all the systems because all of them connect in the back except for the NES. So <laughs> that, that's kind of a problem there. <clears throat> okay, so uh, maybe I should keep this green one out of the way. Not, not to have it so close to me. So I'm going to have this one all the way over at the very end here. These are going to go to that box eventually. I've got a splitter for the uh, audio because as you know the audio is only in uh, mono for the NES. So I got a splitter so it would come off both speakers like if I'm wearing headphones or something like that. Okay. So then we go like that and then we connect it to... I think I'll put it in number five or so. Like I'll go... Hmm. Yeah, I think I'll go number five because the... Uh, I'll, I'll go like 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 in the order of the system's uh, release dates, I guess you could say. So something like that. And then you put the box here. I'm going to set the PlayStation 2 on top of the box. It'll have all the connections and stuff on the back there. And it's, it's about the same width. So I can just kind of plop it on there and then just switch using the buttons here. And then the controller port will be above... Uh, the left side there where it's not going to interfere with the buttons or anything like that, so that should be good like that. Um, so yeah, that's my general idea to make it as efficient as possible, is to get it sort of like that, but you know, it's it's a matter of just playing around with stuff until I get, <laughs> until I get something that I like. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to continue on with it like that and see how it goes. Just as I said, I'm going to repeat the same process with all the systems that I've got all separated out with their individual cables. Also, if I see any extra dust and whatnot, I'll wipe it off with the cloth and whatnot. Also, um, I'm reusing some of those black twist ties that you're seeing on the floor there just because they're, they're okay as is too, so don't really mind reusing them if they still work and whatnot. So yeah, and I, so as you see here, I'm trying to measure out, sort of by feel, what's the shortest length that I can get the cables without actually having like that big hunk of cable wrapping out in the open and showing, because that big hunk of cable there is kind of looking messy, plus it tends to get caught on all sorts of other cables, which can create uh, tangles in on itself. So I'm just trying to get those into a place that will not be a factor if I should move stuff around a lot in the future. So yeah, that's another thing that I'm aiming for here is to make it easier for future dusting maintenance and whatnot too. So just, you gotta think of all these sorts of things when you have a game system set up because chances are you're gonna have to dust them in the future. And then if you do, you're gonna, you're gonna come across some problems. <laughs> If you don't have it in a decently set up way, like for instance, disc based systems, they have those vents on the back. Well, if you don't pull them out to dust the vents in the back every so often, they can overheat and then cause issues and stuff like that. It's similar to a uh, PC where you got to keep the vents on the back of those. Uh, cleaned out, so that's one thing that you'll definitely have to dust. You could maybe get away with not dusting the console systems like the NES, SNES, and 64 because they don't use discs and they don't, you know, they don't, they don't have this, that sort of moving part processor thing, but you still probably want to dust them just for the sake of taking care of your systems, unless you don't care all that much about it. But I do, so I am making this as good of a setup for everything as I possibly can think of. All right, there's our SD systems here. I'm not so sure about the PS2 being on top of this box because it's not as stable as I thought it would be, but eh, I could always move the box on top of the NES and put some like cloth on top of the NES to protect it from scratches or something like that. But yeah, it's, uh, oh, my flashlight. <laughs> it's, uh, significantly better than it was before because I can actually I mean I have them all actually tied up and yeah I mean, I mean yeah sure they're all still a lot of cables coming from up above but that's the thing we now know that the cables going up are going to the systems above <laughs> there's no real way around it you know with the whole cable thing because everything uses cables so you can only just get it as tidy as possible 
But yeah, that's a pretty good start, I would say. Not done yet, of course, since I still got the HD stuff, but yeah, the, uh, the speakers are kind of tricky in on themselves because it's got one cable that's attached to the speaker thusly, and it connects to, well, I should say one of the speakers connects to the other speaker here, and then there's also a power block, well, power brick that goes down below, and I'm not sure where to put these just yet, the Wii Remote charging thing, because, well, it's just kind of like a miscellaneous thing, so I'd like to kind of place it in last where it'll fit best. Uh, the VCR, eh, I'm, I'm probably going to stand it up vertically next to the TV or something like that. Uh, all, the, all the rest of these, the Wii U is going to go in the cabinet. The Switch up on top, SNES Classic probably up on top. Yeah, let's get to it. Oh yeah, and whatever I'm dipping down below, it's because I'm just plugging something in. So, you're not missing a thing. <laughs> One more thing, I recently got this GANA uh, uh, HDMI hub. And what it does is that when you turn on a system, it automatically switches to that system, so I don't have to fiddle with the, the HDMI switcher on the actual buttons on the console itself. So that's a handy dandy little thingy, I must say. So for the HD setup, I'm basically doing the same as I did for the SD consoles, is that I'm wrapping up the cords as short as possible, and just basically connecting the power cords to the power down below, the HDMI connections to the monitor up above. But those power bricks for the Wii and Wii U are really a pain. <laughs> I just ended up laying them back there in a way that I thought that they were secure. I'll probably f try and figure out something better for them in the future. But the main issue, I would say, was surprisingly the HDMI cables themselves, because they are of a really thick, stiff cable material, and rapidly Wrapping them up doesn't really feel like that I'm doing the cables any favors because it feels like I'm putting a lot of stress on them which could cause internal tearing. So I'm just kind of laying them up on top of the, the SD TV down below for the meantime, you know, like tucking them back there. And that's the best I can think of right now. And that is about it. Yeah, everything's connected. Sensor bar, sensor bar. Yeah, I, I did eventually decide to put them up here kind of by default because there just really isn't enough room in there so yeah also I should probably center this more towards the opening so it doesn't get stuck with a disc or something like that there we go <laughs> the power bricks are oh, dang flashlight the power bricks are way way back there stuffed up against the wall kind of bracing with that little notch yeah so that's my plan for them but it's not the tidiest and maybe they'll fall eventually and also maybe back here I could be a little bit better but I'm not too sure how to deal with that because these cords are really stiff so I'm not sure how to really tuck them back behind the set because you know the monitor here has a little clip of sorts for all the cables that you can slip through there and whatnot so I'll probably utilize that somehow uh, but other than that it's all 100% functional Woohoo! <laughs> But yeah, you get the idea of what I'm going for here in terms of like cable tidiness and whatnot, so... Okay, picture follow-up time. I did end up putting the VCR over on the left side, as you see there. Uh, it's standing vertically, but I don't think that will affect anything, because I believe film can be run vertically, like with projectors and what whatnot like that, so... I don't think that'll cause an issue, but if it does... I could always stand it up horizontally, but I, I haven't found anything that said you can't have a VCR vertically. The other reason why I put it on the left side of the TV is because at the back left side of the TV is the RF connector that the VCR hooks up to, so it just seems to be the closest place to have the cord all tidied up in such a way. As for the game system cords themselves, I might see if I can get them even tidier, but I'm not sure if I can do that without it being impractical. Like if I tie multiple cords together so that they, they aren't just like hanging out in the open and zigzagging from up top and whatnot, then I have to disconnect the cable ties if I want to move a system out from the vertical area or whatnot. Yeah, it's just not really something that's you really want to do at least I think I mean maybe if you really don't mind having to disconnect that every time you want to dust or move something go right ahead but for me I'm not too sure I'll debate myself on it
So as for the HD setup picture here, I admit that I could have probably gotten this to be a little bit better than I did than just shoving the cords back up on top of the SD set. The reason why is because I was kind of rushing due to running out of battery on the camera as well as space. I was recording for like an hour 40 minutes, so I was like, okay, I better get this HD setup done as quickly as possible, otherwise I'm gonna have to wait hours for it to charge and whatnot, which in hindsight I probably should have just waited for so that I could have done it more properly, but hopefully you got the idea of how to get your cables all tidied up and whatnot from the SD portion of it, not the HD portion of it. I mean, mind you, it's all still functional and whatnot, it's just not the way that I would prefer. I prefer to have tidier cables, if at all possible. Well, that is about all I wanted to say here, so I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video.